back to bed, America. Your government is in control again. Here, watch this. Shut up. You are free to do as we tell you. You are free to do as we tell you. And I have an exclusive story. I'm here with my friend Nolan. It's one of the original members of Occupy Portland. And you actually were arrested. You were the first person arrested for an Occupy Portland related right. issue. Back, uh, back in October. So let's go through your story, man. Well, all right. Um, this would have been on, let's see, August 28th. Uh, so, you know, a good two, three, three and a half weeks ago, I was uh, arrested by the FBI's terrorism task force at my apartment in Evanston, Illinois, right outside Chicago. And um, it was about, it was in the morning. I wake up, I hear this banging on the door, someone shouting, police, open up. And because I was groggy and I'd just woken up, Stupidly, I thought maybe it was unrelated to me. Uh, so I went and I answered the door, and there, it, they, in they came. Seven, eight guys, all decked out in their FBI body armor, carrying their little Beretta pistols, and they come in and they, they handcuff me. And my dad comes out, and uh, he sits down, and he, he stares off into space for a second, and then he, regains his tongue, and he, th he says, "FBI, what are you fascists doing?" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we all have a good laugh, well, internally anyway. And then they take me downstairs, and then out into the street, and there's Chicago PD backing them up, and there's more FBI, and they got all these vans that say FBI Terrorism Task Force on the side. And um, we get inside, we barrel down the highway with uh, sirens blazing and everything, and they take me down to uh, downtown Chicago, Central Detective Station, and uh, throw me in this uh, sort of semi-solitary holding cell for... Uh, for about two and a half days, um, which is much longer than most people are really supposed to be held there, which you could tell by the food. All they had, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, every day was this one slice of bologna between two of the whitest pieces of bread you've ever seen in your life. And I just sort of hung out there for a little while. I um, actually managed to pass the time by peeling the paint off of the bench that, we were, uh, that I was sitting on and then dipping it in water from the sink. You could then apply that to the wall, and it would be like cement. So I uh, amused myself by writing, "FBI, why can't we be friends?" And then a little frowning face with a little, little tear, just so, they would, <laughs> so they would know I wasn't serious. And then after two and a half days of that, um, they came, they picked me up, they transferred me to Cook County Jail, uh, which is at 28th in California, in Chicago, and uh, was there for a couple hours. And then they came back again to extradite me back to Portland because of a warrant, apparently, that I had relating to some unpleasantness from back in October when all this began. Um, they put me in one of those, like, Hannibal Lecter-style handcuffs where it's, you know, you can't lift because you got the belt on with a little loop. Oh, around your waist? Yeah, and one you, of the waist Little ankle like, shackles where you're, like... The, no, no ankle shackles, just, uh, just okay. the Bane, Hannibal Lecter-style oh, yeah. that thing. So um, we got in the van. They gave me a nice Jimmy John sandwich, so that was nice. So wait, wait, wait. Just one, just one quick question. Mm -hmm. Um, so the uh, under the auspices of uh, of what did they arrest you for? Of a warrant, like apparently I had a warrant out of Oregon, and okay. of course, you know, if you've all been paying attention, you probably noticed that uh, right here in Portland, they they do this sort of thing. I believe it was two, three, maybe four months ago when it was um, the U.S. Marshals sweeping the city. They dropped in on the Red and Black, um, you know, the Red and Black Cafe that is, with their unmarked vans. They'd go in. And they'd make arrests all over the city of people who had active warrants for whatever, even if it's just an open container warrant from months and months ago. They'll pick you up, and then they'll ask you political questions. Right. Uh, same thing happens in New York a lot. The NYPD will do this. So there's articles about that all over the Internet. Okay, so let's go back but to anyway, your story. Um, so um, they moved you to another jail? So after being moved to county jail in Chicago, they mm -hmm. picked me up again with the, with the belt handcuff deal. And then, this is where it got kind of weird. We got in the van and drove all the way out like near the airport and we stopped at this giant parking lot in front of an Allstate insurance building. We waited there for about half an hour and then this other van with a different group of FBI fellows came and pulled up and we did a little prisoner exchange transfer kind of deal. And then these guys, they drove me the rest of the way to the airport, just a couple blocks, and still handcuffed to this thing. We marched up onto the plane by like the service entrance in the back uh, because of course the airline had been alerted ahead of time that this would be Oh, happening. you'd think they're transporting, you know, one of the top leaders of Al-Qaeda yeah, or something. Yeah, well, you know, you, I mean, does so. that make you feel special to oh, get that I kind of treatment? Oh, it sure did. It was flattering. But, right. um, so, 
they sort of put like a towel over my you know handcuffs because I was handcuffed the whole way. Also, so trying to like at least give you some semblance of dignity. Yeah, well, yeah I mean they didn't. Well, mainly it was because they didn't want to freak everyone else on the plane out. Oh. Okay. And of course, there's one place when you don't want a criminal going nuts, and I guess that's on a plane. <laughs> um, bought me lunch. We talked about Game of Thrones. It was all very bizarre. I, they're playing sort of a a friendly game where they want to get inside your mind by pretending to be your pal. It's you know it's part of what they do. So anyway. We get on the plane, four hours, it's a direct flight, so that was nice. None of that connecting bullshit. So you came right back to Portland? We came right back to Portland. They uh, dropped me off at the airport with the port, local Portland police fella, get in the car, and this is where... Oh, wait, wait, by the way, that cat is definitely not with Al-Qaeda, so when the FBI watches this, I hope that they, they don't raid my house because of suspicious feline activity. Yeah, you know, cats, so, right. cats are all anarchists. Yes, they are. But um, Especially if she were, she were black, that would be great. Yeah, that would be horrible. <laughs> but, um, so we get in the van, uh, Portland police van, and I see the dispatch computer in the front, uh, which the guy's handling it sort of surreptitiously. He's sort of bending it down and looking at it, and he's not really letting me see it. But I catch a glimpse, and it confirms, you know, what I'd obviously been suspecting. This wasn't some bullshit little, uh, probation violation roundup that the FBI terrorism unit was just doing for fun. It was obviously something larger, something more political, because right there on the dispatch computer it said, Do not advise suspect he is on terrorism watch list, possible member of terrorist organization, yada, yada, yada. So wow. what, what they'd been telling me the whole time, like when I was first picked up, I asked, Hey, is it usual for seven armed, armored guys from the terrorism task force to be serving some little local warrant? And they said, Yeah, no, it's totally, totally normal. And then later when they picked me up and put me on the plane, I said, Is it normal for you to be... Uh, flying these people, all, flying a little, some guy who tagged a building uh, all over the country and spending all that money. And they said, yeah, no, it's totally, we're just doing it sort of as a favor to the Portland police. Which, of course, was obviously bullshit since, first of all, if you're going to be extradited from one state to another, they don't do it within hours of your being uh, sentenced to extradition. No, that's usually a process that no, takes, takes weeks. Exactly. Everybody, you know, in there, I talk to them about it. If you're being extradited from... Uh, Chicago to Oregon, the distance that is, it'll usually take at least 27, 28 days. And it's never done on, um, it was, this was like a Thursday, and the Cook County Jail only extradites people on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Right. So that was different, and it doesn't now, I, I want people to understand on the interwebs that this all sprang from the first day of Occupy Portland, mm -hmm. when there was 10,000 people marching in the street here in Portland, and uh, you guys were picked up for uh, uh, stenciling Occupy Portland-related uh, paraphernalia and, and things, right? And I'm, I'm not saying that I'm some, like, innocent little flower that these mm -hmm. uh, big bad men have been picking on. Obviously, there was the warrant out of Oregon relating to the Shh. tagging and all, which is a crime. Sure, but that's not but an act of terrorism. Exactly. Right. The point is, even if... Out there, people think I'm some sort of punk kid that tags police cars. That doesn't mean that the FBI should be wasting its money flying me all over the country and asking me all kinds of questions because I'm, like, the next Osama bin Laden. So but you do you do confirm that you saw on the computer screen that you yes. are indeed on the terrorism watch list? I am indeed on the terrorism watch list. And while I was in jail uh, here in Portland, because, well, let me circle back to where I was going. Sure. Um, they drop me off at the Justice Center, they process me, we go out to Inverness County Jail, and there I stay for about two and a half weeks. 